Welcome back to Stage 3, Part 1, where we head over to Bitbucket, where we look at setting up our Bitbucket Pipelines YAML file. The Bitbucket Pipelines YAML file will contain the different steps that are needed to package our code, build our image, then send it up to AWS. It will then update our service with the new task definition so that our service is running our updated code. Okay, so let's get started creating our Bitbucket Pipelines YAML file. If you head along to your repository and select the Pipelines tab, we then can choose a template that we can use. And as you can see here, we've got all different kinds of templates that we can use. We're going to use the .NET Core one. I'm going to delete out the template code that they have and paste in my own. And if we have a quick look at what we've got here. Up the top here, we've got the image that we're going to use. Bitbucket Pipelines uses Docker images for their builds and you can use and select any image that you want. Our image here uh, contains the AWS SDK. This is really important because we're going to be using AWS commands. The next is Docker True, which allows us to use Docker commands inside our pipeline. And then we follow the pipeline steps by Bitbucket. So we have a pipelines branches and we're going to run our code on the master branch. We then we're going to create the steps and we're also going to use caching here. So that means that after the initial run, if a step has not changed, then it will use the cache version. But if it has changed, it will then rerun the step again. Caching a version will make the build run faster, which is desirable in our case. I've copied and pasted comments about what we want our build pipeline to actually do. So we want to log into AWS. We then want to build our Docker image. We want to tag and push the Docker image to ECR. We want to register the ECS task definition and capture the version. We're then going to set our service that's already running to zero. And then we're going to set the service back up to one, but assign it the new task. So at the time of writing this, Docker made a change which um, requires an update to the AWS CLI. So at this point, I'm doing pip install upgrade user CLI to upgrade to the latest CLI. Alternatively, I could also bake a new image and put that latest CLI into this image here. Then I wouldn't need this line. Okay, so this line here is going to get us the login information to AWS. And this is going to log us in. Next, we want to build the Docker image. Make sure I spell that right. And then we're going to tag and push the Docker image to AWS's ECR. Now the good thing about this is that we were given commands when we created our AWS repository. So if you head along to repository, the demo web API, and we view the view push commands, we'll see things like the login information, the build information, and also what we're gonna use now is the tag and the push. So we're just gonna copy and paste those makes it super easy and we'll push our image great so now we need to get, store the image name in the variable so we're going to say export image name and our image name we can grab from just above here Now the next part is probably the most uh, complex and hardest to read um, and that's creating and setting up the task. So let me just copy and paste what I mean and then we can talk through it. So 
so there is a lot of code here but if we have a quick look at what it's actually doing so we're doing an export task version so it's going to st store the task version from our new task that we're about to create we're then running the aws command ECS register task definition, which tells us that we're going to register a new task definition. The family, which is ECR demo web API. So we must specify a family for a task definition, which allows us to track multiple versions of the same task definition. The family is used as a name for our task definition. Our container definitions is a JSON object. And this contains stuff like the container name, the image name that we stored just above here, the port mappings that we're going to use, 80 and 80, the protocol, TCP, memory usage. And it's also going to output the task definition version that we've just set here. So while it looks like a lot of code, um, hopefully that makes a bit more sense about what it's actually doing there. Okay, so next let's set our service that's already running in AWS to a desired count of zero. Point it to the cluster. And that's going to spin down the service that's in there and allow us to add the new task definition and then spin it back up. So the demo web API equals the family name up here and the task version also equals the task version that we've set. And finally we're going to say desired count 1. So that's going to spin it back up. Okay so it looks like our configuration might be invalid. We'll just have a quick look at what we've got a yellow dot here. Okay I haven't added spaces into here. Our configuration now looks good. Okay, so now we need to make sure that Bitbucket can talk to AWS. In AWS, you can set up what are called IAM roles. These allow you to add users with a certain set of permissions. For security reasons, it's not desirable to have a user with all permissions to your AWS account. So you can set up users with certain permissions. And in this case, what we're setting up is access to our EC2 containers and also the ECS cluster. So once we set up that user, we'll be given an access and secret key. Once we have our access and secret key from AWS, we can head back to Bitbucket, head to settings, under pipelines and environment variables, we can set our AWS access key and our AWS secret key. We also want to set the region that our cluster is in, and in our case, it's US East 1. Once you've set the access and secret key, Bitbucket will read it automatically when we do our get login. That concludes stage 3, part 1. Stay tuned for stage 3, part 2.